So, less than two months after the Anne had been sectioned, the Mental Welfare Commission for Scotland were admitting that no documents existed. And of course, uh, you've spoke to her, I've spoke to her, and uh, one thing Anne Gregg is not is crazy. She is definitely not crazy, she's definitely not uh, got any mental problems, she's a very articulate and very well-spoken woman, and uh, so this was just an outrageous attempt to discredit her, yeah? Oh, very, very much indeed, yes. It was read to take her away from her daughter and actually return her to her father. It was yeah. even worse than that. Yeah, indeed. Uh, yeah, well, we're going to get into this now. Uh, obviously, we've got about half an hour's worth of uh, audio from Anne. I've just split up into about ten different sections, so we'll go to part two of this now. But just before we do that, we'll just uh, talk about this. Basically, uh, Anne named uh, a lot of people who need to be investigated as possible child abusers, and obviously I'm not going to name them here on the show, but uh, you know them, Robert. How do you think that in this day and age... We can have a victim naming her alleged abusers only to see the police ignore her testimony and not even investigate these claims. Well, I think this is a, a problem that I have heard of problems in other parts of the world, but this particular uh, case is really specific to Scotland and the current regime that exists in Scotland. And I think it's fair to say that Scotland is what I would describe as not really a true democracy. They have multi-party elections, uh, quite apart from the, uh, the UK parliamentary ones, uh, which many of you will be aware of, but the power does not rest with the, whoever is the elected body there, it rests it, it, and has rested for many years with uh, an unelected elitist cabal which consists mainly of bankers, big business and most significant of all a, a few very powerful law firms who ostensibly control Scotland. So if uh, any of the people that uh, you uh, perhaps have uh, suffer from, if you suffer from crime by any of the people who have connections with any of these groups, your chances of getting investigated in Scotland are virtually zero. Not only zero, but every effort will be made to intimidate you, uh, as, as was the case with Anne. Uh, and we have to point out in this case, uh, when we say that we have some of the names of the alleged abusers, uh, they're quite high-ranking people, uh, including the likes of a judge and police and etc like that so that when we're talking about that let's just make it clear to the listeners if you're wondering why what we're talking about here because uh, I know not everybody is fully informed of this case although a lot of people are I'd just like to uh, read out some MSN stuff coming in now uh, Greg says I would like to let Robert know that people in Aberdeen are becoming aware I recently held a showing of his presentation regarding the Holly case he is a hero and a brave man for standing his ground the UK need, need more men like him uh, Greg, thank you very much for that, and I also agree with you uh, that 9-11 was an inside job. <laughs> uh, that's a separate story altogether, though. Uh, this comes from Jacob. He says, evening, uh, keep up the good work. And uh, Ruth says, how are you doing? And we've got a few others in here as well. Um, but we'll get to them later on. If you want to get in touch with us here on MSN, uh, just add us, studio at manchesterradioonline.com. That's studio at manchesterradioonline. Dot com. All right, then, we're going to go to the second clip here of the interview I did earlier in the week with Anne Gregg. And uh, after she named all of the alleged abusers, she then explained how that, apart from her former husband, none of the people named as Holly's abusers had been interviewed by police. Listen up. And how, how many of these people have been questioned by the police? None. <coughs> well, my husband and my son. Which, I, you know, my son was questioned as well, Greg. But Greg, I would say Greg was more of a victim rather than, you know, and I think he's very scared to sort of speak out against all these people. But Greg was involved from an early age in the abuse. I, I think he was the first uh, person to be abused, you know. So there's three years between him and Holly. Uh, but when they were younger, it was Daddy, Greg and uh, Holly, you know. Um, it's probably speculation, but why do you think... The police haven't investigated or haven't questioned any of the people that you've just named? Well, basically because it involves a policeman and a sheriff. And the person who's in charge of the uh, Justice Department is Alicia Angelini. And um, we're not saying that she's involved in the, possibly the pedophilia, but she's certainly involved in, in the cover-up. And she's, she's denying knowing anything about Holly's case. You know? And you have records that she does? We do have proof, yes, that she was. Yes, that she knew. From? from 2000, yes. Yes. All right. Just tell us a bit about now, like, just how you're feeling today. Obviously, this is a busy time. You've just done a radio interview in America. And, um, David Icke and Alex Jones has been covering your case. It's got a lot of attention. And obviously, we've got the Facebook group and stuff. Just, how you, just tell us about how, how you're feeling at the minute. Well, it's, it's very encouraging, uh, you know, now, after battling on my own, you know, with, with Holly, uh, 
you know, for many, many years, writing letters to every, uh, you know, public body in Scotland, you know, to, to look at Holly's case. Uh, not only am I fighting it for Holly, I'm fighting it for my brother, because uh, my brother was found in a, a burnt-out car in the outskirts of Aberdeen. And just at uh, New Year time, we found out, uh, after years of battling to get the, the autopsy from the Procurator Fiscal's office, uh, that my brother had suffered, you know, very serious injuries. Uh, a fractured skull, uh, a broken sternum, uh, broken ribs, uh, extreme bruising, and uh, in his stomach was a, a brown liquid. And, you know, my brother didn't drink whiskey at all. And, you know, uh, you know, there's heaps of things in the autopsy. He, in the autopsy it actually states that he was sitting in the car, he was alive and sitting in the car and burning plastic was falling onto his legs. Now, no one, I, I would defy anyone to sit through that, you know, as a, as a way of suicide. It's just unheard of, you know, unheard of. And he witnessed some things? Yes. Holly has stated that uh, my brother caught her father and her together. Now, we have established, you know, from Holly when uh, that happened. Because I gave her a, a sort of parameter of, you know, that time, which was uh, a holiday, that, a big holiday that we had in Canada. And I says, was it before that holiday or was it after the holiday? And she said it was after the holiday. Now, we came back from that holiday the end of September of 97. And my brother was found in that car on the, uh, the 17th of November of 97. And, you know, he ended up in that burnt-out car to silence him. All right, that was me speaking to uh, Anne Gregg a bit earlier on in the week. Uh, you're listening to the Tony Legend Show here on Manchester Radio Online. And if you want to talk to myself or Robert Green, uh, please call in. Maybe in about half an hour's time we're going to open up the phone lines, but just save the phone number now, 0161 202 1677. That's 0161 202 1677. And if you want to add us on MSN Messenger, please add us now, studio at manchesterradioonline.com. All right, Robert, uh, Anne was speaking there about the death of her brother, and we'll speak more about th about this possibly l later on. But I just give people a back a bit of a background into the death of her brother, because basically what she just said in the interview uh, was that uh, her brother had witnessed uh, Holly Holly's dad abusing Holly, and a couple of months later he winds up winds up dead in very serious and violent circumstances. So just explain to folks uh, the case surrounding uh, Roy. Yes, indeed. Uh, well, one of the, the great problems that we had, uh, first of all, I would say, when the, uh, when the, the, the murder took place, and even the uh, lawyers representing the other side have, uh, conf have admitted that it is a murder. It's not an alleged murder anymore. It's a murder. Um, the family couldn't get any details at all. They were very concerned about why Roy would have died. Uh, he didn't seem to have any problems at all. He was financially uh, stable. He had no personal relation problems. Um, there was nothing at all that um, he had no health problems that anyone knew about. And no one could understand why he might take his life, which how it was, it was indicated that way, although not shown as suicide as such. But the uh, authorities led everyone to believe that he'd killed himself. Now, of course, to begin with, uh, suicide, uh, people who commit suicide very rarely do it by fire. It's very, very unusual for that to happen, and uh, it, why a proper investigation did not take place is absolutely beyond me. Uh, often fire is normally, uh, it's normally arson, which is often used to cover up other crimes and destroy evidence. So why uh, no one... Took, uh, took the possibility of uh, foul play up at the time is uh, uh, mysterious and disturbing, to say the very least. And I've got in my hand here the autopsy. Uh, can you just explain to folks what, what's in the autopsy and also uh, how that it was quite difficult to obtain this particular autopsy? Oh, very much so. Well, the cause of the death was, uh, on the death certificate, was smoke inhalation. That's what it said, smoke inhalation. 
Now, uh, as I said, the family from 1997, 1998, were trying to get a copy of the autopsy, but couldn't obtain it. The Crown Office, responsible for these things in Aberdeen, refused to send the autopsy. Um, one of my uh, colleagues who's been help helping Anne uh, earlier on the financial and uh, administrative side tried repeatedly to get copies right into, the, uh, into the, this particular century and was getting nowhere. Anyway, we uh, tried again. In fact, we did have one letter that uh, I've come across very recently, dated the 22nd of August, I think, uh, 2008, which states that no records remain. Now, this is curious because uh, during the latter part of uh, 2009, we tried again to get the autopsy, uh, already having had the letter to say that it didn't exist anymore. And lo and behold, on the 31st of December, it turned up at Anne's home. And one of the things that is in the autopsy, or some of the things that are mentioned in the autopsy, was that um, uh, Roy Gregg suffered from uh, severe uh, skull problems. He had great damage to his skull, uh, two broken ribs, and a broken sternum. Um, 